Hey, uh, so uh, this is another C sharp tutorial. Uh, so you're going over arrays. Uh, so I've, I'm in Rider 2023. Finally got it to work. Uh, so basically, I'm not sure if I have enough space to record. Hopefully, this video doesn't stop because it stopped a second ago. Uh, I have 300 like I have like 300 videos to upload coding videos can you imagine 300 videos so it's uh, I'll try to start uploading those which I have been but only about one a day so I may need to go to like three a day to start getting those out at least so I may have to delete some videos if this doesn't work uh, so basically I just have a constant here that's private constant in size points to 5 then we have a private in array sorry so here we have I think there's something glitching out I'm not sure if I'm running out of space or not that might be it uh, so here we have private int array array points a new int passing in size uh, then here we have so this is called array initialization so we just have the elements so after we declare a normal array instead of putting a semicolon here we remove the semicolon and then we put the square bracket uh, the curly brackets then we fill the array with values then here we put a semicolon at the end so that's it. Uh, so instead of, you don't need, so there's a couple things here. So the series of values inside the braces and separated with commas is called an initialization list. So this actually is called, it's either called array initialization or an, an initialization list. So these values are stored in the array elements in order they appear in the list. Uh, so the first value is, I think we have 10. Last value is 50. So this has five elements, index 0 to n minus 1, where n is 5, so therefore it would be index 0 to 4. So the formula is the array size points to uh, the size. So if you go, if the size is n, then you go array, basically the array size points to n minus 1. Uh, well, actually, array, so instead of size, basically, yeah, so the array, so sorry, the array index, is, so the array is indexed to the array size, which is 5. So 5 is n. Then you go array index, so array, the array is indexed. Uh, to n minus 1 0 to n minus 1 sorry so it starts at 0 and then goes to n minus 1 let me just write that out so I don't confuse anyone we've done this in the notes already but I'll just write it again here so we have array is indexed <coughs> array is in indexed to n minus 1 where n is the size so in this case, size is 5, so the array is indexed to 5 minus 1, so 4, 0 to 4, 0 to n minus 1. So the array is indexed 0 to n minus 1, where n is a size. In this case, size is 5, so the array is indexed 0 to 4. So the first element is index 0, the second one is index 1, third one is index 2, fourth one is index 3, last one is index 4, it's always going to be to n minus 1. The last element is going to be n minus 1. Uh, so you don't need... <coughs> excuse me, so you don't need this size. Uh, so you can initialize this array without the... Let me go with array 2 in this case. 
So you can go here with uh, private int array, we can call this array2. You can point it to a new int. And then instead of passing in the size here for the size, you can just leave it blank. Then here you could open up the curly brackets and then we could pass in the same thing. This well the same values, but it's stored in a different array. So these are gonna be different memory locations than these ones. A uh, third way to do an, an initial array initialization or array initialization list is that you can leave out the new operator. I think we've gone over all these ways. Kind of be crap. It would be, be kind of crap if you got tested on all of these. But for example, we could have int array. So private int array. We could just call it, for example, array three points to and then we don't have to instantiate with the new and the int array. I usually go with the third way. This way. Just because it's the fastest, but I usually don't use an array initialization list to begin with. If I need to use one, I'll use this. Uh, these ways obviously require more more code, so it's it's slower. Uh, so slower is not obviously not good and also it, it probably takes more memory to actually instantiate a whole object like this rather than just pointing it to values uh, so I think that's just the three ways to do it so we could do the same thing with string arrays so we could go uh, here we could have, for example, constant in size, or we can just go with new size. Uh, so constant in new size, we can point it to a value of like 10. Actually, no, 10 is going to be too much. So let's go with uh, the say Let's go with one less. Actually, let's go with like three. The pr private constant int new size points to three. Uh, so we could go string array. String array str. Let's just go with str. Uh, points to new string array passing in size. New size. Oops. So the private string array str points to new string uh, passing in new size. Then here we could go points to. Then the we go like right here we could go with str one. Comma str two. Comma str three in, in a string literal. <laughs> Close it. Why is it doing that? Whoops. What did I do wrong here? Private string array uh, str points a new string array passing a new size. You know, uh, so private. String array points to new string array passing in size. Is there two equal signs here? I believe there is. I don't think we, we don't need this equal sign. Sorry, it's a typo. Let me just check that. There's actually a typo in my notes. My professor, I think my professor made a mistake, or they're just trying to trick us. They're like, yeah, you're going to type this out and it's not going to work, and we're going to test you on it. Okay, so let me, let me just make sure this is correct, so I'm just going to run it. Uh, that should work. 
says succeeded, so nothing's going to pop up because this is a GUI, not a f uh, it's not a console app. It's just this is just like random. This is just like just code like in a command prompt code. Uh, okay, so that that's fine. There's no other equal sign. So there's no double equal sign. Okay, so here we'll have so we'll do the second way here, so we could go with the exact same thing again. So obviously we just go string. Sorry, so private string array. str2 points the new string array, passing in new size. Actually, instead here we don't include the size. That was the point of this. And then here we go with the string literal str1, then the string str2, comma str3. You could have filled this with whatever string you want. Just an example. Perhaps you guys get tired of the fruits and vegetables, uh, and I'll be here all day trying to pick the best ones. So that's why I went with str. Okay, so then here we'll go with private string array str3 points a new string str. Uh, actually, we don't need to do that. So we can just go private string array str3 points to. It's not that hard to remember all uh, these these different ways to do it. This these two are the same. Pretty much, you just remove the size. This one doesn't have the new keyword and the the, the second half. So here we'll just go with str1 comma str2 comma str3 in a quotations double quotations for the string and that's it. So we can use a loop to step through an array. Uh, so we'll just do that. So here we could have int array bells. Uh, private, sorry, private int array vowels points to new int. We could pat. We could just pass in a value here. Let's go with three instead of using a constant. So then here we could say uh, four. If we're going to use a for loop. Why is it doing that? I don't think you can write a for loop in there. Okay, so we'll go with in the constructor. You can't you can't write a for loop in a field, I guess. So for uh, int i points to zero, i is less than three. We could use size. So here we go i plus plus. We could also use the length property. Then here, here we'll say vowels of array index i points to. We could set them all to 100. So index 0, 1, and 2, because the size the size is 3 here. So the, ver the it would be index 0, 2. Uh, if n points the size, then it would be n minus 1. So all index zero, so uh, vowels array of index zero would point to hundred, vowels array of index one would point to hundred, and vowels array of index two would point to hundred. You could have done any value here, you could have done like one million or whatever. It would quickly instant it would fill uh, it would fill all the indexes with values. Okay, so if you're outside of the bounds, you get an exception or an error. So if you try to put four here when the array size is three, then it's not going to work and the program will crash. The length property, so we've gone over this, all this in the notes, which is kind of just doing this, uh, just more practice. But here pretty much we'll have the length property. We've done this exact example, but here we could say double array temps points to uh, so double array temps points to new double array passing in whatever some values. 
okay that messed it up I forgot private okay so here we'll say uh, so we could say that in the constructor that we want a message box dot show then we could say in a string the temps array has plus temps dot whoops outside that the temps array has and then plus temps dot dot length the temps dot length plus and then elements in a string So it's going to tell you how many, how long the array is, or what the size is. So you can also use the uh, <coughs> length property in a for loop. Obviously, so here you could say we've already done this. So for int i points to zero. Uh, I points to zero, I is less than three, I plus plus. Actually, sorry. Here it should say I is less than, uh, we have our array called, we're going with temps. Why did I put that one above that? This should be here. So here we could say I is less than temps dot length. You could also say less than or equal to, it's just up to you. Uh, well, you'd want to be less than, I guess, in this case. Is less than temps.length. You can use that in your for loop condition. And outside, uh, below that here, you could then open a block here, and then you could say message box dot show. And you could say that you want to take temps of array index i then call dot two string on the end because remember the message box method only shows strings it can't show a number type therefore you have to cast the type in this case you have to use a conversion method to convert it to a string so you can use the two string method it's the same as java uh, and C sharp it just has a capital it's 100% the same uh, so that's pretty much it in the next video we'll be doing a lab so the lab uh, we'll be doing a GUI app make a small app like a pop-up window Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, use an array to hold a list of random numbers. We're going to print that out to basically a label. So there's five labels and a button. So we're going to click the button. It's going to generate all the labels with numbers. And it should change the numbers every time when we click the button. Okay, so thanks for watching guys. If you guys like the video, you can like and subscribe to the channel to support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.